I'm Matt the Guitar Guy here. Today we're going to be talking about on bass chords or slash chords depending on how you look at them. Now these chords that I'm going to show you are the most popular ones that I like to use that come up a lot. When I first saw these shapes though they kind of freaked me out because they're a little bit different than your standard chord. So what I'm going to tell you about is my version of what I call slash chords or on bass chords. What are they? So they're those chords you see where there's a chord, there's a slash and then there seems to be another chord written above it. And I used to think, well, does it mean we can do one or the other, or what's the deal with it? But what it really means is you've got the main chord underneath, so in which case, in this case, it might be an E, but the on bass, it could be a G sharp. There's my G sharp in the top fret. There's, so it's like an E, but I'm adding the G sharp into the bass note, so the bass note becomes that. Because this sort of sound, and that's a crazy way to play it that I'm playing it right there. But um, another way to think about it is the guitar player and the band might be playing an E chord, but the bass player might be doing the G sharp over that little section. So another example of me using that chord, this, this is the shape I'll show you in a second. I'm in the key, key of A. Here's the on bass chord, on bass. It's very often a chord you'll just move through on the way through, um, through a little progression. So let's show you what the shape is, okay? So I'm gonna do the shape down here in the bottom here so it's nice and easy to see the shape. And what we've got here, this is an E by the way, with a G sharp bass, so it's exactly what we're talking about. First thing is gonna be the second fret, so come in on that one, you've got the second fret on the fourth string. Third thing is gonna be on the third string on the fourth fret, so that's second fret, fourth fret. The little finger's gonna go on the fifth fret on the second string, okay? Now that is our E chord. If I play an E chord, that is just the three notes I need for an E. Now the second finger is going to do the cool thing. Now I've got, by the way, my thumb position is really low, so I can get a good stretch there. And then I've got to get my second finger over to the fourth fret on the top string. Now naturally, that's not going to come in on a hard angle. It's going to come in quite sort of angular. And what that's going to do, it's going to force that note there to be already muted. Okay. So it's going to cause that string to be muted, which is what I want. So I want to hear that note, this note, this note, and this note. And I don't want to hear the bottom string either. And that's naturally been muted by the little finger here. So that seems like a crazy shape to do. When I first learned it, I thought that has to be the ridiculous, most ridiculous shape I've ever seen. But I've got to admit, I've used it a lot, a lot. And it comes up a lot, okay? It's very handy, especially with chord scales, which we're going to get into in another session. So, there's an E, there's a G sharp bass, there's my E chord. So what we're doing is we're forming the chord from this note here, the main chord. In this case, that's an E note. So there's our chord, and there's our on bass note. And you'll see in the sec well, next section, I'll show you exactly how we can use this in a lot of stuff. But it's really important to get that chord down. Now my thumb position, if I took my whole hand away, my thumb position is really low. It's completely straight. My thumb is completely straight, my hand's straight. That's to get that wide position on that shape. Otherwise, if I have my thumb high, straight away my hand clamps up and there's no way I can get those, that position really comfortably. I've got to go low thumb, then I can get that stretch, okay? Now that's the bar chord version of that on bass chord. So if we used a different key, uh, you can see I'm in a different position. Here I am in B, then I'm going down. To a, what would that be, an F sharp with a B flat bass? Another way of doing it, and it becomes part of a chord progression. Now, you might see it, the really smart, smarty pants out there might actually see that this on bass chord is exactly the same as the on bass chord if I go down to the end position, the D with the F sharp bass. So it's a, it's a bar chord version of this chord. So it's a, all I've got to hear is a D chord. I'm doing my, using my thumb to play the bass note to play the on bass note. Now if I take my fingers off and reposition them, except for my first fingers, I don't need it. It's the same shape. We've just turned that into a bar chord. So we can move this mini bar chord mini, we can move it up and down the guitar neck and do lots of versions of that shape, okay? So that on bass chord comes very handy. So if I'm in the key of, for example, of A, I'm playing the A bar chord here, fifth fret, and I wanted to go down to an F sharp minor, I mean, this is a, these are chords in the key of A. Here's my F sharp minor, which just all sounds fine. Now I'm gonna use the bar, the 
little on bass chord in the middle. Can you hear the difference there? Now it's a bit more sophisticated. I've got a little, a little chord to move through, which is my on bass chord. And I'll admit that it's hard to get to in an initially, but use the pressing technique, which is a great technique you can go and check out on my channel, the pressing technique on learning new bar chords or any new chord you want to learn. So, there's another example of using that. So, it's, it's, there are many, many ways of using that chord. A famous one would be this song here, Tears in Heaven. There it is there. So, that first part. Was this an A, which is just like we did for the A. Then it went to the um, exact on bass chord we just did, which is the E with the G sharp bass, etc. Now there are other bar, um, on bass chords that we do as guitar players, but that's just one of the ones I come across a lot, and it's nice to have that shape and under your belt. Now hopefully you like that information. If you really like uh, my style of teaching and you're getting a lot out of it, um, you, hopefully you're enjoying the awesomeizing series that I've been doing, which we've got some more stuff to come to you. Um, if you do enjoy it and you really want to get in touch with me, help me figure your guitar playing out, I've been helping a whole bunch of cool people all around the world recently, and you can do that through Skype. So just go to my Facebook page, Mark the Guitar Guy, click on Book Now, and we can set up a session with you and me, and so we can actually sort out your guitar playing. There might be one little thing that just needs to change. Maybe you are actually better than you realise, and you just need me to tell you that. Um, but get in touch, that's a cool thing to do. Go and see Mark the Guitar Guy, go to markthegitarguy.net. Follow me in all the different ways, subscribe, like, all that sort of good stuff. And if you want to support me on Patreon, uh, you can do so. Also, you can actually just give me a tip, send me some love, maybe so I can get a haircut. You can send some love to PayPal, my PayPal. Um, all those details will be below. Loving being connected with you guys again. Can't wait to see you again soon. See you later.